Okay, people, I'm back. Fred White, Tales from the Pen. If you're new to the channel, go down and hit that subscribe button. I'll wait. Click the bell notification. I'll wait. And then click the word all. This way, anytime I do a video, you will know about it. For those who are new to my channel, my name is Fred. I'm from Queens, New York. And I talk about my experiences in the penitentiary. I talk about my experiences at Rikers Island and the penitentiary where I did almost 16 years of my life. I was sentenced to seven years, but I did more than double of that because I made wrong choices and wrong decisions when I was a kid. And that's what my channel is based on. I don't tell these stories in a glorification kind of way. I tell these stories so these kids understand that these are certain situations that you could be put in and to make the right choices and right decisions. That's what I. That's why I do my channel. Again, nothing to glorify or anything like that. That's that's not what this is about. But today I'm going to tell you a little story about something that happened to me in Kaksaki. And I tell the story so that again, so that the kids understand that even if sometimes maybe you don't want to do something in the penitentiary, sometimes. You're forced to do something because everybody else is looking at you. That peer pressure. That same peer pressure that's in these streets. The same peer pressure that sends half these kids to jail. Right? That, you know, that P word, that pride. Right? A lot of people have died for pride, people. Let me let y'all in on that little secret. So many people have died in life, you know, period, for that P word, that pride word. So many people have caught cases because somebody disrespected them and their pride comes out. It's just the way it goes. So today I was going through some old stuff, some old pictures and things like that. And I happened to find uh, a, a ticket, right? A ticket in an infraction. In prison is when you do something, whatever it may be, fight, assault, uh, you know, argue with the police, uh, you know, don't clean your cell. Like after, you know, like they can write you infractions. Right? And I'm going to tell you guys a little story, okay? Here's an infraction, right? Y'all see it? See what that says up top? Inmate misbehavior report. You see it? See it? See it? This, the handwriting is horrible, and this is old. So some of this paperwork is a little bit of uh, This is the tear hearing they give you after you commit a crime or you commit something inside the penitentiary. This right here is the superintendent's disciplinary, disciplinary hearing witness. You see it? Hold on. See what that says up there? Disciplinary hearing witness interviews. Yeah. And this is the actual outcome of the situation. You see that? You guys see that right there? You can barely read it. I'm going to break it down to you. So what happened was this guy, right? I told you guys about Kagsaki. Kagsaki was a bit different, man. It was a bit wild. Everybody there had a lot of time and the kids, everybody was young. So everybody, you know, 16, 17, 18, 19 years old, when you're getting sentenced to a lot of time, you went to, back then you either went to Elmira or you went to Kagsaki. Those are the two for the, for the adolescents maxes, okay? So I was sent to Kagsaki. Now, so I was there a little while, the porter dude, you could tell he was, you know, smooth with the words, thought he was a pimp type dude, right? He was a porter back and forth. You know what I'm saying? We're going to call him Scoob, all right? We're going to call him Scoob, just change it up a little bit. So, Scoob comes to my cell one day. I'm new, pretty, pretty new. And he tells me, hey, man. I got a loud mouth for sale, right? I'm getting, like, I don't know what type of game he spit as far as he was leaving or he was leaving the jail or whatever. He couldn't take this loud mouth. Now, the loud mouth was uh, a big tape deck, right? Because in the Maxes back then, like when I first went up in 90, you couldn't have AM, FM radios. They came later. And I think you can maybe have them in the mediums at that time, a medium security. I don't know. But in the Max, there was no radios. You had what was called loud mouths. Okay, they had the basic ones, I forgot one, and they had the Califone ones, right? Only a few people had the Califone ones, man. Shout out to J-Po. So, 
So this kid, he comes to my cell and he's like, you know, he was playing, I, like he was cool and everything. He's like, yo, I got a loud mouth for sale. So I'm like, all right, um, you know, what you selling it for? He was like $40 and, you know, a disbursement form, $40. You know, I'm gonna give you the address. And what happens is you fill out a form and you put how much money you want, like a, a, a money order, and you send it up front. And then they send it to the address that, you know, you want that money to. You know what I'm saying? Or there, or like if you want to order stuff from a catalog, okay? Follow me. You want to order sneakers. You want to order towels. Whatever it is you want to order. You fill out a disbursement. You put the address into the people. Boom. And you put your order form in. You don't seal the envelope. You just send it up front. You just close it, but you don't seal it. And then when they get it up front, they take the money out your account, put the money order in, and they send it out. Follow me. So dude was like, you know, I got this loud mouth, boom, 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 $40. Again, like, all right. So I filled the disbursement out, and he was like, you know, as soon as it clears, what happens is as soon as it clears, when you get the mail, like a few days later, they send you a pink slip. And that pink slip is your receipt that it went out and they took the money from your account, okay? He's like, all right, so as soon as you get the pink slip, you know, show it to me and I'll give you the loud mouth. So I, I know I should have, you know what I mean? But again, I was young and, you know, impressionable. I was still a teenager. Like it was just, you know, you know what I mean? I wasn't really up on the game, even though I had been on the island, you know, upstate is a bit different and they speak a little different. You know what I'm saying? So I let it rock, you know, so a couple of dudes, you know, I told dudes and dudes was like, nah, that don't, that don't sound right. You know what I'm saying? Nah, don't, don't. You know what I mean? Don't, don't, don't do it. You know what I mean? And then, um, so what I did was, they was like, nah, don't do it. I'm telling you, he's, he's shysty like that. He been there a couple of years. He's grimy, man. He be sneak even dudes. He be doing this. Don't, don't fuck with that kid. Don't mess with him. So I'm like, all right, you know, I'm taking dudes. Where? So what I did was I spent the money. I went to commissary. Like I got, you know, that same next day or whatever. I spent the money. So it came back to disbursement form that I didn't have the money to send to him. So he stopped, fl he stopped, I was like, oh man, I spent it, my bad, you know what I'm saying? It's all good, man, I'm gonna get one on my own. So he stopped getting mad, nah, bro, you said you was gonna do something, you're supposed to do it. He was one of them type dudes. Like now he flipped it, you know what I'm saying? He was all nice at first, now he's trying to lay his bully game down. Nah, bro, you said you do something, you're supposed to do it. Ah, 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 boom, 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 boom. And this other kid, of course, you know, all these dudes was warning me about this dude. You know what I'm saying? But it was, I had already made this train, did it. So I was like, yeah, well, I'm just telling you, I, I spent it, and that's it. Now I got one coming, don't worry about it. He was like, all right, well, I'm talking crazy, some shit he said. So it got back that, you know, he was scheming on me and shit. I was like, oh, well, all right, cool. So, you know, went to the yard. I'm gonna read it to you. So first of all, up top, we ain't gonna do all that. I got my name, my number, and see what it see what this says right here. Look, I want you, I want you, I want y'all to see what this says. Incident, right? I want y'all to see what this says. See the incident, incident yard. You see that? You see it? And then it says right here. Look at this right here. I'll show you another part. Where it says, I'm trying to make it clear for y'all. See that? Rule violation 100.10. Inmate shall not assault. You can't really read it that good, but you got to see it. So that's what it says. Inmate shall not assault. I can barely read this because the, it says, Inmate shall not assault. This is 100.10. For all you dudes up north, you already know. Shall not assault and something attempt to inflict bodily harm on others, on other inmates. So it has the date on such and such, and it says at approximately eight something, inmate such and such was cut on his right cheek in the yard, causing an approximate, again, we're not making this up here. You see what that number says? An approximate eight inch, see it? Eight inches? Yeah. Approximately, yeah, here it is, this part right here. Eight inch laceration, you see it? Eight inch laceration. Honestly, you know, you're not supposed to mark yourself. That's also something you don't do in the penitentiary. And when you mark yourself, you got to do the sign of the cross all the way around. 
It was eight inches. Not three, not four. I'm not bragging. I'm just saying this is the shit that happens, man. You know what I mean? When that peer pressure, people are looking at you now like, yo, he tried to play you. Maybe they gonna try to play you, right? And it's it's like, it's it's just the world within the world. I explain this to you guys all the time. Boom. And his cheek in the yard, causing an approximate eight inch laceration. My investigation into this incident that inmate Johnson as the person who assaulted inmate such and such. My findings are as follows. This is the police writing this. At the time of the incident, officer such and such observed inmate such and such and inmate Johnson in the yard fighting. That's when he went and blah, 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 and seen that inmate such and such had a bad cut on his face, right? During, my, during further investigation, during my interview with inmate such and such, he stated he was cut by a tall white inmate. Don't know if y'all can see that. Don't. You see, see that second line there? Look. See that? He was cut by a tall white inmate. Right? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Tall white inmate that he was fighting with until the officer stopped them. You see it? You see it? Well, my inmate, until the officer stopped them. Stopped them. Now, this is, you can barely, because this is old and it's, it's faded. You feel me? And that said, this is page one of two. I didn't find part two, but I remember part two. He was another one that supposedly thought he was dying and, right? But later on, you know, when he said he didn't, he didn't rat, he didn't do any of that, this, I had to pay for it. So, they, uh, here's the superintendent hearing, you see it? And it says, inmate such and such, I'm going to blow, 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 inmate such and such named Johnson as the perpetrator in the, in his assault. That reason, here. It made such and such, and it was an assault that resulted in serious injury. You see that? Okay, that was, in other words, this is what they're saying that they went by. Okay? Because again, these dudes be talking. I'm just showing you guys. I'm going to show you guys. And this was like that tier. Everybody that's been up north knows this right here. You know what I'm saying? Everybody who's been up north. What this says right here is. SHU 365. That means special housing unit. That means the box. Loss of packages 365. Loss of commissary 365. Loss of phones 365. Loss of good time 365. You see that? Oh, yeah, and then they also have this where it's called the superintendent hearing. Disciplinary hearings, blah, 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 and what they went by. They went by the, the officer saying he saw us fighting, and basically the inmate saying that the tall white guy did this. You know. Now, again, there's nothing to glorify. I'm just saying that these are the things that happened. What happened was I eventually, I beat that case. I got a year and did all, the, all of that, but the reality is he never named me. And when we were fighting, you know, whatever happened, Right? You know, because I, I thought he was scheming on me, and dudes told me he was scheming on me. And again, that's that peer pressure. You understand? These are the things that you, these type of situations are the ones that you really don't even want to be in in the first place. You understand what I'm saying? Again, I'm not bragging, I'm not glorifying, but I had to do what I had to do. Because if I let this, <clears throat> this guy try to play me, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, uh, uh, you know, he tried to play me. He was never had his intentions of giving me that loud mouth. Because, again, other kids and other white kids that was there went through the same thing. Like, they paid him, and they never he never gave it to him. And then what he would do is, like, he'd wait, and, and, and when he'd get the money, he would cut them and send them up out of there. Like, he was a grimy dude, this dude. You know what I'm saying? You understand what I mean? Because I skipped that part in the, in the story. So when other people told me, yo, he, when he gets that man, you know, he might come at you, like, to try to get you up out of there and because he got your money already. This is what dudes was doing for 40 and $50, cutting people and trying to scheme and rob? Do you understand the mentality, people? Do you understand these dudes' mentalities in the penitentiary? So he would do this to other kids, and they were all white kids. 
when he would do this, take the disbursement, and when they get the pink slip back, hey, I got, I got the money. Can I have the thing? He would just dead them. If they were soft, he, he would just dead them most of the time. But one or two dudes, he, you know, he had cut, you know, after they he got the receipt that that the money got sent. So he had a whole scheme going on. This is now again. I don't say this for glorification, y'all. You already know I don't do that shit. I'm telling you of of what really happens inside. I'm telling you the mentality of people inside that the, the things that they think about for forty dollars, you know, for forty, fifty dollars willing to, you know what I mean? And that was, you know, he didn't get my money. He got what he got. You know, ran up on him because, you know, once I knew that, I was just like, I got to get him, you know, before he tries to get me. Because again, he flipped it like, yo, <laughs> talking crazy. All right. And that's what happens a lot of times because, look, they see their skin color. And that's what I be trying to tell you guys. Now, I'm not saying all oh, the white guys know because it was, you know, as I, as I grew in the penitentiary and went to real man jails, there's some serious white dudes, man. Serious ones. I'm just saying, but when I was young and I was a teenager and they were teenagers, there weren't too many, man. And I don't want people to take that shit wrong. But that's just the way it was. We telling stories here, tales from the pen, right? That's what we do. We keep it 100. Again, there was one or two out of a, out of, out of 100. Now, again, when you go further up and you got them gang, biker gangs and those toast type dudes and hardcore dudes that have been down 20, 30 years... They're serious, dude. They'll kill you. But I'm just saying, in my era as a teenager, with around other teenage white kids, it wasn't... Look at my face. You know what I'm saying? This is, this is real. This is why I'm the only kind, you know, doing these type stories. Think about it. Right? With proof. You know what I'm saying? Eight inches. Bump. So I ran up on him in the yard. He wasn't even looking. And that's how it goes, man. You know what I'm saying? Got a lot. Through the burner, I didn't get caught with the burner. I mean, he fought. He fought back. It wasn't like that, but, you know, we fighting, he's bleeding. <clears throat> I was just, I don't know what happened. I don't know why he, he, he came at me. I don't, I don't know what happened, but I eventually beat that because he actually just said the white dude, he just said he got caught by the toilet. Like, he wasn't even just beating around the bush. Another one. Because there's a couple of them. You guys know I told you the other story. You see what I'm saying? So I ended up beating that. You know, probably. I don't know who was the, at the time. Maybe it was Selsky. Donald Selsky. I'm not sure if he was the commissioner. Or Gord. One of them dudes. I think it was Selsky. Ended up doing an appeal. And I beat the case. Because he didn't name me. Like I just said he attacked. And you know, I'm fighting him back. I don't. Cause I never got caught with nothing. True story. And I ended up, even though I got sentenced to all that shit, I beat the case. Came back to population. And he was gone. You know, when I came back to population, I was good. I got the receiving room job after that. Motherfuckers had love for me. And, and again, it's not glorifying. I'm just saying that these are the things that happen, kids. You're going to have to be put in situations <clears throat> where you're going to have to make decisions. You see what I'm saying? You're going to have to make decisions, quick decisions, that could affect your life and affect the rest of your life. Because he's another one where eight inches from here all the way back, I just missed his juggler, man. I just missed catching a homicide. All because he tried to play me. He tried to rob me. He tried to take my money. You see what I'm saying? And this is, this is the stuff that happens in the penitentiary, man. This is the type of stuff... That, that, that I preach you just so you kids understand, man. It's not a fucking game. It's never a game when you're in there. You know what I mean? And you're being preyed upon and don't even know it. I thought dude was cool. Until everybody started putting bug in my ear, yo. He ain't cool, Fred. And there's a lot of... He's just one. There's a lot of these type dudes out there. And there's a lot of these type dudes. What do you think all these... Dudes is doing all this crazy shit in the streets and you be scared. Where do you think they are? They're behind the wall right now. And you going in there and, you know, everybody's a killer. You know, half the house will rob you. Half the house, it's just like, it's a horrible world. And it's a world within a world that sometimes I always try to explain that people wouldn't understand unless you're in that world. And I try to paint this picture for you guys so you don't have to go through these same trials and tribulations that I did. 
I had to fight for my life, man. Several times. And that's not, you know, I'm not bragging. I'm not, I'm just saying. This is the shit that happens. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Look, it's right here. Any of my New York dudes know what this is. You understand what I'm saying? All my New York dudes know what these papers are and what these papers mean. And it was amazing when I was going through old pictures and stuff today. I found all this. I'm like, oh, sh crazy. And I remember the incident well. But, again, people, this is what happens when you put yourself in these situations. Are you listening, kids? The penitentiary is not a game. The penitentiary is not a joke. Stop listening to people who are just going to send you to prison. Stop following dudes who's going to put the gun in your hand. Stop listening to these guys who come home, you know, you know your uncle, your cousin, whoever, and tell you it's nothing. That's not, that's far from the truth, man. It's something. And again, physically, maybe nothing happened to people, but mentally and emotionally, you can't tell me that. Things didn't happen. You can't. Every day was a struggle. Every day was some type of violence. Every day there was some type of, especially in the Maxes, especially in places like I'm talking about, Kaksaki, Comstock, Clinton. I mean, it's warrior, gladiator school. They don't call it gladiator school for nothing, man. These dudes are pulling swords out and trying to kill you. Would said because they got 75 years and nothing to lose. They stab you, they go to this, you know, they get a little box time, come out. Maybe they get a new charge. Because usually when you cut somebody, they started it later too, to really implement it. When you cut somebody and you get caught, you get caught with the weapon, you get caught cutting somebody, you're going to get a new charge. They bring you out to whatever county jail is in, like whatever facility in is a county jail, a county uh, courthouse. So they'll take you right out in handcuffs and they'll take you right to the courthouse and you will get rearranged. Even though you have 75 years, you will get rearranged on assault charges, attempted murder, however, whatever the damage is. And they rearrest you and do it. You know what I mean? That's how it goes up there. You get new charges. Added to whatever you already done. But again, for people who have 75, 80 years, they don't give a fuck about another two years. What do they care? This is what I'm trying to tell you. These people exist. Right? And as I always say, jail is a place where a rumor will get you killed, man. Just a rumor about you. It may not even be true. Is this how you want to live your life, kids? Or you kids in the street running around doing all this craziness? Is this how you want to live your life? Because if you in these streets and you wilding and you bugging out and doing all that, this is your destiny. I need you to understand that. This will be your destiny. And then you're going to think back and when you're watching my videos and understand no one's going to be there for you. Your homies may just put up a free, you know, a free you hashtag. And everybody keeps it moving, man. Everybody just keeps it moving in life. That's how it goes in life. Life just keeps on going. You know what I mean? You're just going to get a, a hashtag and that's it. Hashtag is not going to help you with commissary though. A hashtag is not going to help you get a package. A hashtag is not going to protect you when you got wolves and, and vultures around you trying to pray and get money and do all types of things for the betterment of themselves because they scheme. And that's how it is. There's so many schemers in there and scammers and, and they prey on people. Fact. You guys know the motto as far as the streets, man. The streets don't love you. Hear me, kids. I need you to understand this. The streets do not love you. The streets love you when you're there, right? But when you die, what happens? Life goes on, man. Life goes on. Rest in peace to my boy. Pour out some liquor. Let's get to the next thing. It's zero done. Right? Look at King Vaughn, was a hot, doing all this King Vaughn. I don't hear nothing about King Vaughn anymore, right? Shout out to him, man. Rest in peace. It's just crazy, man. 
It's just crazy that the blueprint is there in life. The blueprint is there for the streets. The blueprint is there. And if you follow that blueprint of the streets, death or jail is pretty much your only options, man. I never seen anybody who was banging and doing all this crazy shit retire off that shit. Get a pension off that shit. I never seen it. Why? Because the streets don't pay like that and the streets don't fucking love you people. It's crazy to me. It's crazy to me. Every day I'm waking up, I'm seeing shooting still everywhere. Shit's up, crimes up everywhere. <sighs> you know, I wish I had somebody like myself. You know, I have people saying little things, but watching stuff like this or when something I could watch and be like, wow, I don't want to be like this dude. I don't want to, you know, I don't still want to be suffering 30 years later. Because again, all these decisions that, you, you know, I made, speaking from the eye, all these decisions I made when I was young affect me now, man. I told you I've lost jobs. I couldn't get jobs. I couldn't. It was a lot of struggles. And the jobs that I could get were very minimum wage-ish things. That's just the way it goes. I messed my life up, right? All these years later, I, you know, I got a lot of things in order. But Sam, some decisions I made when I was young as a teenager affect me now, man. Still affect me now. You know, I remember I had my daughter and I was doing good in this one job. And they found out about my background. They called me in the office and they, they let me go. And they let me go because I lied on the application. I put no for the felonies because I know anytime I put the felonies, even though technically they say, right? Because you'll have people that say they're not supposed to. I don't want to hear the rest of it. They're not supposed to. It's a lie. I get they're not supposed to be prejudiced against you, but felony and it says for what? You think I'm gonna get hired? No. So I lie. I've never been. I've never ever filled out an application and was truthful. Never. Because I know. I w it would be held against me. And I, you know, had my daughter and maybe she was one or two. And I lost this job and it was a good job and it was just like damn. Because I lied on the application. That's what they used. They was cool. I was good at this job. Everybody loved me. The administration loved me. They let me collect unemployment for a while. Because you know when you get fired back back then, you couldn't collect unemployment. Like, they would be like, unemployment would have to call them. No, he's whatever. He he was fired for this. They don't cannot give any unemployment. But they looked out for me. Because they kind of understood, but they also understood that I couldn't be around in an envi that environment I was in. Again, for decisions that I made when I was a kid. For decisions I made when I was a teenager, man. Not understanding anything in life, man. Thinking I know everything. Because that's the thing with kids. We think, the kids think they know everything. Not really understanding, you know what I mean? And I can speak like this, to, especially to these kids, because I look you right in the eyes and I say, you've never been my age. But I've been yours. So I know what I'm talking about. Need to listen. Because with age comes wisdom and also experience. And you know the model people, experience is the greatest teacher. But somebody else's experience can be just as valuable if you pay attention and listen. And on that note, Fred White, signing off.